Kirby, you just got back from the NCAA convention. You got to take one of our own, Anthony Lyons, with you among several other Texas Tech officials. What was the convention like this year? It was historic in a number of ways. One of which is that the five high visibility conferences had a chance to conduct business together uh, for the first time in the NCAA autonomy session. We had 15 student athletes in the room that had voting privileges and we were so pleased that Anthony Lyons was one of, the, one of those 15 student athletes. You're given the opportunity to play a sport at a university. You want to you know, get out there and um, like present yourself for the university as best as possible and when you get to the point where you're representing not only the university but your conference and then also the student athletes of the uh, entire nation, it's a uh, it's a big chip on your shoulder right there. You spoke up, as did many athletes, with some questions, maybe even some concerns regarding the change that's coming in collegiate athletics. What are some, what was your main focus and what answers did you really want to get out of it? I took uh, the focus on um, the cost of attendance. Yeah, with proportionality, I was trying to see how uh, it would impact, um, you know, non-headcount -head athletes like baseball, softball, um, I think soccer, and like the smaller sports. And it was big for me because, you know, as a baseball player, you know, we're, we're not all completely on full scholarship. And, um, you know, we were trying to figure out how that extra money for the cost of attendance was going to be added on to the scholarship. The way that the legislation was approved is that those sports will receive the increase in their scholarship budget. So for example, in the sport of baseball, they receive 11.7 scholarships. So you would take $4,300, the cost of attendance, multiply that by 11.7. So now that denominator increases that the coaches now have additional aid to award to the student athletes within their particular sports. College athletics is changing. However, you feel like coming out of the convention, the voice that student athletes are now being given on a national stage, you feel like it's headed in the right direction? We can never lose sight of the fact that we are a small component under the higher education umbrella and that the young people that come to our universities, most importantly, need to leave here with a degree because that's going to have a significant impact and influence on their life after college. We've done a poor job of educating uh, the public, uh, educating our students who attend our universities on the value of that college degree and that education. And I believe, 100% it was my experience, that the lessons that you learn in intercollegiate athletics, in practice every day, and in competition, only enhance and complement those lessons that you're learning in the classroom. And through the lessons and interactions that our student athletes have with their coaches every day, it gives them an added advantage in preparing them for life ahead. I think so much of the conversation focused around additional payments to our student athletes are focused on the minority. Out of all the young men that play college football, 99.3% of those young men will not play in the NFL. Only 0.7% of the young men who play college football will play in the National Football League. That's not a lot. So, it's so important that we continue to remain committed to higher education, that we remain committed to providing the very best opportunity for young men and women to come into our universities, to participate at the highest level in intercollegiate athletics, and more importantly, leave our universities with their degree.